I love acting classes, but when I find an acting class like this, I get so giddy about acting classes. I just love learning about acting classes and being like, oh my God, I want to take it. So today I wanted to tell you about this one. I have not taken this class yet, but I am talking to Tony Gapastone today. I'm Tony Gapastone. I am an actor, a screenwriter, and a director making movies in Redwood City, California. I've been in the Bay Area for 25 years and I founded Brave Maker. And Amrit Hamsra, which is one of the students of the Brave Maker Academy to learn more about it because I would love to take it one day. And let me tell you the logistics before, because before we get started, what do actors really want from an acting class? We want to be, get better at acting and we want to be able to book more work after the class. And this class, because you film a short film at the end of it, you come out of it with a clip of you acting that you can post on your casting websites and be able to submit to some work. So like, that is a dream. This class meets on Wednesday nights from 6 to 9 p.m. for six weeks and is $600. No matter what other acting techniques you take, I think this one is a great class to take because you get to work with Tony and other professional directors depending on which class it is. And it's really frustrating when you are taking acting classes and you're like, well, I'm, I think I'm good, but I haven't really worked. Like I have, I don't have any, anything filmed to show. I also know how frustrating it is as an actor to just do classes and not really feel like you're being able to do anything with it. Cause acting class is very different than filming. It's so different to have a boom mic or have somebody, you know, putting a, a lav on you or dealing with only really getting one take and then moving on. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to build something that would try to incorporate that and really give people an opportunity to be on set and then have some footage for a reel. I just wanted to talk to you about the acting class specifically, cause I want to yeah. get a perspective from the actor. As far as acting training, did you have any acting training before taking the Brave Maker class? Uh, so I had taken a few classes. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for. I am a full-time physician here in the Bay Area. Uh, I practice minimally invasive surgeries. One of the aspects of uh, medicine is once you're done with medical school, which is essentially all book work and you're you know, your face is in a book for God knows how many hours a day. But then you go through, for me, it was six years of training afterwards. So after the book work, you're learning on the job. That is the best way to learn your craft under somebody's supervision. I started the Brave Maker Academy with this mantra, train actors by making films, but it's a lot of work. So <laughs> I'm honest, I'm like, you're like, this is why other people don't do it because that's right. So much work. But I've had actors tell me, that they feel like they've come alive doing this. And they've also been recognizing, you know, the budget is it's like a positive investment for them because they said, hey, I did a school over here that charged me, one person said $850 for a school that promised to give them footage. Now the footage was of them doing other scenes that are of known films in front of a gray backdrop, which that is something. But, but you can do that at home. Exactly. Exactly. And that's not really going to show some, you know, casting director or another director or producer that you can take original content. You're just kind of mimicking, you know, or taking another take onto some IP already. So the class is set up to be a working actor partnered with a working director. Like it's really like a workshop. We're, get, we're on our feet every week doing stuff. Tony did mention that, that he's thinking about a, a lot of different things that might change. So right now, as you experienced so far, uh, week one through four are more workshop and then mm -hmm. five and six are filming those shorts. Yep. Correct. In our six week Academy classes, we do one focused on commercial, just one night focused on commercial. And we often joke about like, this is heads happy land from the time you do your self tape to be on set to everybody wants it to be warm and friendly. And it's all about, you know, do you have the right look and the right personality to hang out on a set for 12 hours? But that's only one, one part, right? Then we have to go, how do you develop characters and how do you deal with, you know, the drama and all the different things, which a lot of actors, we don't really get the chance to do that in the Bay area. And when I first heard the guy in the first day of class, he's like, you know, it's going to be a six week course. You know, obviously we're going to do some basics. We're going to do some, you know, some groundwork, but by week five and six, we're going to be shooting some short films. And I was just like, yeah, okay, buddy, this is not <laughs> going to happen. Like, I don't know what you're talking about, but that's what we did. I and two other directors taught the first few sessions. I brought a director up from Los Angeles named Christine Weatherup. She's got a feature film on Peacock and she's a working actor herself. So you can look her up and she and I 
uh, we wrote original short films. So that's the other thing that is making this an exclusive experience as we're writing specifically for the actors that sign up for the class. He'll have maybe around by week three, sometimes week two, he'll have a script written and then we can start to workshop those, you know, lines and, you know, just trying to get into the character's mind. If there is no script yet, uh, we'll do exercises. So it's a lot of getting into the character's mind and him being a director. He sits back, he watches everything happen. Uh, and then he says, okay, now try it like this. Pony, uh, he caters to the person. So he'll write a script and he'll say, I'm writing it for, you know, actor A. And I know actor A has only had, you know, two classes before. If you are a beginner actor and I had two people who had never taken an acting class and I was just really open with them to say, hey, you're not going to have a, a leading role in this short film. You can't carry a film yet, but I'm going to give you something at your level. OK, that you can handle. And so one of the, the actors, uh, he had just a, a few words, literally just a few words in one of our short films. But I really gave him a lot to do with his body to, to react because I, I wanted him almost like a silent film to learn how to navigate the acting and expressing and reacting with his vehicle of his face and his body and his movement. And, you know, we had to have some conversations like that's not always what people want to hear. Like, I want to be the star. Well, you're not ready for it. Everybody has gained from the class. So obviously, whatever somebody's there day one, they're going to learn something completely different. And the beauty of it is Tony caters to each individual person and their level of experience. Here's one thing we are trying to do is create a safe and brave environment for our actors. Like I... I often say I always wear my brave maker hat, you know, my metaphorical brave maker hat, which is of inclusivity and diversity. And we want to be empathetic, kind human beings, all people. And occasionally I'll, I'll say, I'm going to put on the entertainment or the Hollywood hat and say, in some spaces, you might hear this kind of feedback. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with bad direction? How do you deal with jerks, you know, on set? Um, but I'm never going to tear anybody down. I always want people to feel good, but I'm also going to have to say that didn't work. That wasn't believable. Uh, you, you're not taking the direction. I asked for an adjustment. I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. So I have to be able to give that, you know, in a real way, because I'm trying to set us up for finding sustainability in the entertainment industry. And I'm a director. I also happen to be an actor too, but I'm trying to teach you how to work under the pressures and expectations of making the day, you know, mm -hmm. uh, ending on time, getting the scene work. And sometimes, you know, you really only have one take because of time. We just had this experience too on our Academy set. There were four different scenes and each scene had two actors in it. And the first two scenes were great. Everybody got about a half hour, 45 minutes to do, you know, all the different coverage and angles. And then we had a camera glitch and then we had a sound issue. And then, you know, the, we're losing light. I look back at my very first experience in this environment and I think about, I, had, I kept messing up on one line. And I kept messing up and I kept messing up and everybody's like, oh, don't worry, you know, you'll get it. Just take your time, you know. But that clicked, like I, as I was messing up, sitting there in front of the camera, I'm looking around and I'm like, yo, Amr, this is not just you. This is not just your scene partner. There are 20 other people right now. You're wasting their time by continuously messing up this one line. It's messing up the flow and it's messing up your flow as well. That was the biggest lesson I learned on day one of shooting, and I will not make that mistake again. That's what I mean by learning by doing. You don't realize it until you're in there, in the environment, in, you know, the lights on you, the cameras on you, all these eyes looking at you. Um, and you realize really what it takes to make a film. In acting class, you get as many takes usually as you want, but on set, that's not the reality. And that's what you have to train for. But I love it. And if people want to be a part of it right now, it's very organic. It's like they have to contact me. We're going to do auditions for the next session, which is in fall of 2023. And I'm trying to figure out tiers because we have beginner actors and amateur mm -hmm. and we have professional actors. So we're trying to figure out how to really do it successfully. It's very small. We're not doing more than 10 actors. We're building this network. So you're getting relationships with people. I can't guarantee this, but a lot of the actors that I'm kind of working with, I'm mentally auditioning for other stuff. A hundred percent. I would pay that just for the fact of like creating a relationship with you, creating yeah. a relationship with the other director, whoever directs or writes the short film. Like mm. for me, that's super valuable because we're going to work together again and again after you this. know it. And I'm also thinking about my other friends who will always call and say, can you cast, help me cast this, 
this demographic, this person, this whatever, which we all created a whole another Instagram page called Brave Maker Crew because I was getting enough calls where I'm like, I get really invested because I want to help, especially the Bay Area film community. I want to help yeah. people and I want to help actors, but I can't like spend all my time doing this for free. So I just created an Instagram page where I could say, go to this Instagram page, Brave Maker Crew and see all the headshots and cast somebody from there. So we're going to show... Uh, some of the short films we did for, for Brave Maker Academy at the film festival. So we'll have a 45 minute little block, but we'll talk about this process and what we're doing. And then hopefully we'll be able to scale it. And hopefully we'll be able to have a slew of directors who are teaching these on different nights. Cause right now we only offer one night and one session basically at a time, but eventually we'll be able to offer more as we grow it. So speaking of the film festival, yeah. tell me about the festival, but also tell me about how an actor can benefit from the film festival and how do you like to be approached from actors? Because I, I know stuff. what not to do is to <laughs> slide into the DM and be like, hey, can you cast me in something? Happens all the time. <laughs> Happens all the time. Gosh. Instead of like, can I audition for you or let me follow you and wait for you to post a casting? Fifth year here in Redwood City, July 13th through the 16th. There's four days. We have like 40, 40 ish plus filmmakers that are coming from all around the country and probably a good 20 Bay Area filmmakers, which is cool. So about half of them are probably Bay Area filmmakers. Get a pass. Yes. Come to all of the films. We're doing so many workshops. We have entertainment industry panels, women in entertainment. And some of them are actually free. So if you're going, oh my gosh, I don't have the budget to buy a pass for 150 or I don't have the budget to buy $20 for a workshop, look for the free ones. We got an LA filmmaker named Kina Ferguson who's doing an iPhone filmmaking workshop for free at our library. So there are things we're trying to make accessible for any level, okay, at cost. If you're an actor or if you're a filmmaker, yes, come and hang out. Come and watch the films. I'm a filmmaker, so I want to have connections with actors. I love it when people tell me what they like or ask me questions. And with grace and compassion, if you would have done something differently, that's your choice. Sure, share that constructive <laughs> feedback. And I just, I tell my friends, like, just don't be thirsty. Don't drip and ooze with like, <laughs> please cast me. Can I get your phone number? I'm always surprised with someone DMing me saying, nothing wrong with saying, are you casting anything in the future? Nothing wrong with that. But then I go and I click to follow them and they're not even following me. I'm like, how, you're not following Brave Maker. You're not even like dialed in, or you're, this is the first time I'm hearing from you and you're asking for something from me. This is a long game. This is relational and not to be manipulative or deceptive. It's strategic. Like follow your, your favorite filmmakers, follow local makers in the Bay Area and start liking their work, start commenting on their posts. Like we see that. I see that. And it just is what it is. I'm more inclined to want to connect with you if I feel as if you have already been cheerleading and following and supporting along the way. When you show up to the festival, offer to help. Uh, if there's anything I can do, uh, filmmakers who are coming up from LA, you you can buy them coffee and get some time from them, ask questions about them, get to know them, but also make sure you do your research. You don't have to ask things that are read readily available. Long story short, actors, just think about how you would want to be treated when you are you know, at a place where you're going to be offering to, to pay it forward and do those things. I think maybe we need to get better at talking about best practices uh, about our career, but it is, you know, this is your career. So take it seriously. And there's so many great books out there, how to do this. And there's no right way to make it or to break in. So you got to figure it out, but just don't, you know, burn bridges as you do. Yeah. And there's so much um, information out there. You put out so much. We have all of our episodes that are on our audio podcast, every single app ever out there, almost 200. We're doing a live recording of our 200th at the film festival. You can also watch them on the YouTube page, Brave Maker Org, and see the filmmakers. You know, everybody from Nicole Levy from The Recruit on Netflix. There's so many cool people, and we're really trying to make these inroads from the Bay to LA. So if you want to join, again, this goes back to those relationships. I'm always looking for cool team members who believe in this vision and want to help elevate it. And you know, although we start a lot as volunteers, that's our, our culture is a highly driven volunteer culture. A lot of our volunteers end up getting gig work and getting paid because that's what happens as we build these relationships and then paid opportunities come. And I don't hold that up as like, like a carrot. I don't, I'm really, hopefully honest and transparent about the fact this is how we do it. It's not for everybody. I'll see you at the film festival. Yes, I'm excited. I really appreciate this and we'll keep schmoozing. And this is the great connections, right? Who knows where this will lead and what we'll yes. do in the future. Film festival, absolutely. July 13th or 16th. See everybody there.